In this tutorial, we want to take a look at magazine layout. So um, what I've got here is a bunch of different magazines. You can tell the pages um, are set up all different styles. And so what we're going to look at is what really makes a magazine layout. So here's an example of one which has all the basic elements basically on a two-page spread. We want to make sure that we have a really clear um, beginning title, something that captures our attention, and it, it works quite well when you have some sort of image that captures your attention as well, because of course the two generally relate to each other. And um, with that title also goes a byline, because you always have to say who the article is by. Now with an image, you typically want to have something that uh, tells us more information about the image, such as where the image is of, um, as well as sometimes it's required to have who the image is by, who the photographer is. Sometimes your photographer might be listed in the end information over here. Um, anyway, we want to have where our article starts, and you'll see that this article is in three columns, so it's got a very consistent way that this one is outlined, um, or, I'm sorry, aligned um, as columns, although sometimes articles may have different column setups, different places, because that has certain call-out information in it. Anyway, um, our article starts here and continues on the next page, but we want to break things up with images and with text. You can see right here we have a call-out, which is a quote. We have another call-out on the image over here, which is also a quote. Then an image, and then this call out right here is actually our end information, which is talking about, I believe, um, who the author is of this article. Now, another hidden little element right here, which you can barely see, is this little tiny square. And that square is there to indicate that we are at the end of the article. And that's um, something that's also important to have in any article. Anyway, even on a very simple design, you can have some of these elements. Very clear um, a heading, um, some information that captures our attention that this might be the article start um, paragraph. Um, and then you can see where we want to start reading. This one's kind of boring layout, of course, but it's got a call out, so that helps um, make it a little bit more interesting. But it'd be nice if we had a little bit more going on. Now, columns don't always have to be one set the entire time. You can see we've got three columns, basically, but here we've got two that go across. Now, this is a little bit more of a newsletter layout than a magazine layout, because you can see we have different titles for each one. So um, do be aware that you know you, you typically don't want to have it quite as disorganized as this when it's one magazine spread, but at least you can see that you can change things around if you want people to read different chunks of information in a different way. Now here's a very simple um, magazine article, and what I like about this is that it's showing lots of different ways that you can use images. You can have images that have been cut out and Put on top of a background. You can use the image itself as a background for the article. You can use images that um, are placed as in content, or you can have images that kind of stand out away from the content. So lots of different ways to use it. Notice that you might have um, some sort of disclaimer on the image. So this is about who took the image right here. So they've they've come up with a clever way of using that. Now, the design of your article should re really work um, or fit the art the audience that you're going to have for that article. This is for the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And so you can see it has a pretty aggressive style that's going on here. And just be aware of that. Um, and here's another article. This is for the artist um, uh, Mondrian. So that's why it's kind of tilted and it's kind of got its unique style because this is an artistic magazine and so they've they've allowed it to have a little bit of freedom in the way it's laid out. Now it doesn't matter if your um, article is in English, there are certain elements that are always going to be used. You can see here we've got the same sort of three column layout with sometimes going to a two column layout when you want that information to stand out as being different. Here's a single column layout with another small column. So they, they switch around the layouts in order to call our, our attention to the different areas. Here's another one. Here you can see a call out and then of course other information, a very um, strong title and some sort of opening information. Information about the photo 
or up here possibly. I can't read that particular language, so I don't really know what it says. But um, it's just interesting to see that it doesn't matter really what language, magazine layouts have similarities no matter where you go. So what you want to do is pick what your subject is for your um, for your magazine layout and then start generating some ideas on paper. Figure out, you know, what images do you need? Where could you put callouts? What how many columns do you want? Do you want three columns? Do you want two columns? Do you want four columns? And once you've generated some ideas, you can get designing. Now, you want to think about how you're going to be using images. And this is a very strong um, use of an image here, obviously. Um, and you can also tell it's it's got a great title. It's got some opening information that that grabs your attention and gets you to start to read a little bit about what the article is. Um, and then this is where you want to start reading. Um, and it's it's very it's it's a common practice to make an article beginning paragraph different than the article itself. You can notice when new information um, is uh, talked about in in the article they might they might have something like this like a drop cap just to call your attention to it to say hey that's really new information that starts in that paragraph that means that this first part continues until there and then we have a new um, uh, part of the article so uh, another article here you can see has a really strong use of um, text in this one what I wanted to show is that there's a dedicated use of or not a dedicated but an obvious use of white space in here and so sometimes your columns don't have to go all the way across you can actually play with it and figure out what is going to be best for the design of your article here's another kind of exciting uh, start page but notice that you've got your image on one side and then your text on the other which is great when you have a magazine layout for print but as we go towards layouts for digital print which are basically tablet PCs we're gonna start to use single page starting pages instead so here you can see even though it's a really nice design um, it might not work well for a tablet because all the text is not on one page that really relates to each other so here's a place where it might be better you can see that um, Ted Price is who the article is about and so they've put all the information about him on one page then you can go on to the second page and it's kind of separated from each other but definitely they have a style that relates very much so another nice article starting page and you'll find a lot of them have two page spreads at least a lot of the samples that I found in this one I want you to take a look at the fact that you've got this organic shape and they're trying to make that organic shape kind of follow what um, you know what the article is about of course so you want your imagery and the way that you use graphics to relate to your article for sure here's another one which is kinda cool and uh, kinda fun use of color as well <clears throat> Now, what you want to be aware of is how dense your graphics are. In this particular one, you'll notice that this is for some sort of sporting magazine, so it's pretty dense in content. And just be aware that this might not always be great, because as we go towards devices rather than print, um, some of this might be hard to read. And this also won't be too exciting where everything is kind of boring and, and it's got some interesting images over on the left hand side but on the right obviously there's nothing going on. So why are we talking about all this digital publishing? Well the reason why is because digital publishing is moving to devices and it's happening rapidly especially as we have um, devices such as the tablets. These happen to be iPads I guess although they don't really show exactly what they are but GQ uh, Vogue, the New York Times, and Wired have all put out iPad applications which are digital editions of their magazines created in InDesign. So here is how um, one of these magazine layouts might look. You can see these are the different articles and notice that this article is actually kind of a vertical layout but you can skip between the different pages. Then you can see here's a slider bar that allows you to browse the entire um, magazine all at once and you can see these are single page articles versus multiple page articles so it's pretty cool what's happening but 
this information has to fit on this one page and then give you the ability to interact with it. Like here you can see they're even having to say tap to view because people are, are not used to digital publishing yet so it's going to take a while for us to understand exactly how to use it. But you can see this article has five pages and it shows me that I'm on page four of the five pages. Here is an exciting um, opening paragraph or opening page for an article and that basically has the same information that we always need that is some sort of clear title, some sort of information to capture our attention, information about the author and who the photos are, and then in this case since it's interactive a way to continue with the story. Here's another example of a tablet article and another one. Now what I want you to pay attention to on this one is this little icon down here. If you can tell it's actually a little uh, icon for a movie camera. So it says if you click on these it'll actually play a movie. And that's one of the cool things about these um, digital publishing ones. These digital publishing editions allow us to, to interact with them as well. This one says swipe to flip through the book. So you can just swipe on this image and it will flip through multiple images to show you a gallery there. Here's another one where you have a video that you can click on to play. So pretty exciting what's happening with this field and um, it's going to happen rapidly and InDesign is going to be the application of choice to allow us to create things. So um, I hope you uh, get a little bit more information about what makes a magazine layout work from this and let me know if you have any questions and let's go on to the InDesign tutorials.